Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today for this movement-based practice where we will flow with our breath and work through some tension in our hips, in the shoulders, in the length of the spine. So I'm really looking forward to get started. But before we do, I want to tell you, I really appreciate that you drop by my channel. And if you could hit the subscription button and the little bell, you'll get a note every time I upload a new video. And I love having you join me. Now we can get started. <laughs> So good, let's start at the front of the mat, standing, just building our pose, waking ourselves up from the ground up. So start with your feet, just placing them. Um, you can either have them together, like the big toes actually touching, or you can have and with your heels like a little bit apart, or you can have your feet hip width apart if you like a little bit, if you need that for balance. Just lift and lower your toes, give them a wiggle, a little stretch. You know I believe waking up the bottom of your feet is the first step in waking up your whole body. And then when you're Sort of work through your feet a little bit, open your toes and settle them back down onto the mat. Try and have a little bit of space between each toe. Shut your eyes. You can even put your hands over your eyes. It's nice and warm. The palms over the eyes. Begin to draw energy up through the arches of your feet. Engage the fronts of your thighs. Turn the tailbone down. And then begin to feel your spine lengthen. You are getting taller. Roll the shoulders back and down, broad across the collarbones. You can even touch the outer edges of your shoulders. Draw them back behind you. Open up the chest and then settle the shoulder blades down. Let your fingertips drop towards the mat with the palms facing. Spiral your thumbs back a little bit, really opening up. Tuck your chin and lift the crown of your head. Let's take three breaths here. Connect with your intentions for this day while you feel strong. Stay here with your eyes shut, big breath in. Feel the body lengthen and expand. As you exhale, keep that expansion as you ground down through the feet. Inhale to open the eyes, bring the hands up to join overhead. Interlace the fingers and reach your first finger up towards the ceiling. Bring your elbows in towards your ears and drop the shoulder blades down the back. Notice if your spine has started to arch, your butt sticks out, just pull it back in, turn the tailbone down, and let's arc to the right, squeezing the right side of the body, lifting the left rib cage, breathing into the left side body. Staying here for a couple of breaths. We're just letting the breath move fluidly through these first few poses. Inhale to come up to center. And then as you exhale, arc to the left. Just feeling the expansion through the right rib cage as you breathe in. Inhale to come up to center. As you exhale, drop the hands down next to your hips behind your back, interlace the fingers, release the first finger and point right down at the floor. Open up through the chest and as you inhale, 
Bring your chest up towards the ceiling. Tuck the tailbone in and begin to bring your, your pointed fingers down towards the floor. Chin stays tucked. So we're not totally letting the weight of the head go here. Inhale to bring the crown of the head up. Keep the interlace of the fingers. You can step your feet hip width if they have been together. Soften through the knees and let's forward fold. Bringing that point of fingers straight up towards the ceiling. So we're not letting the shoulders totally go and bringing the fist overhead, but your, the arms are perpendicular to the floor, pointing straight up at the ceiling and rolling the shoulders down and away from the ears. You can let the crown of your head drop. If you like, you can begin to bring that point of your fingers to the right and to the left. Just twisting through the spine, opening up. In a bit of a different way. Looking for any bursts of sensation in the neck, the shoulders, the upper back. Um, and you can hang in that area if you start to feel something. Looking for what feels good for you. If I could see all of you, I, I, you would all look a little bit different as you find that spot that you slept on last night or maybe overworked in the garden or sitting at your desk or something else. And you're just working into that area, gently releasing. Let the fingertips, the, the release of the hand now, bring the fingertips to the mat and lengthen the spine. Crown of the head's forward, hips are back. Nice long spine, a halfway lift. As we exhale, soften the knees, the hands, and step your feet back just to a downward facing dog. So we're going to skip the whole plank thing for the moment. Gazing back at your big toes. Inhale to lift the right heel. Nice three-legged dog. Exhale, bend the knee, open the hip. You can work into the ankle a couple of times here. And then let's lift that right heel back up to the ceiling. Find some extension. As you exhale, knee to nose. Inhale to reach the right heel up and back. As you exhale, right foot comes forward between the hands. Ground the left heel as for warrior one. And let's press into both feet evenly as we sweep the fingertips forward and up. Exhale, sinking the hips. Right knee is over the right ankle. Press into the outer edge of your left foot now. Turn the tailbone down and Pull the left hip forward and the right hip back behind you. One more big breath in. As you exhale, let's bring the right hand forward, the left hand back. Coming to warrior two. Hips and shoulders are facing the long edge of the mat now. And you're just turning at the neck to gaze out over the right fingertips. Sink into the right knee. And remember, to, your back leg is straight and strong, and it's taking some of your weight. Nice, easy breathing here. You can drop the right hand, or the left hand, to the left thigh. Turn your right palm up, and let's reverse the warrior. Follow your right hand with your eyes as you gaze up and back. Sink forward and down into the right knee. Full cycle of breath here. And then making your way back up, warrior two. Straighten into the right leg so that it's straight but not. See, I've got a little bit of bounce in my knee. Push the hips back towards the back wall and begin to reach forward with the right hand. So keeping the chest facing to the side, we're aiming to bring the spine parallel to the floor. And then you can just drop the right hand down towards the floor. Might make it, might not. And the left hand up. 
Roll the right shoulder underneath you, the left shoulder up overhead, over, stacking over the right shoulder. Full cycle of breath here once again. And then softening into that forward knee. Let's make our way up, warrior two. As we exhale, cartwheel the hands down. Bring your hands to the inside of the front foot. Let's dro um, drop the left knee inside down of the, the front back. foot. Plant the left hand. And again, bring your right hand to the inside of the right thigh or knee. Now the inside of the right thigh, just, uh, just a head up, up from your knee. And roll to the outer edge of the right foot. Keep your ankle stiff here. Can roll the right shoulder over the left. Get a nice twist in the spine, stretch in the hips. You can take your right hand and reach it back towards the mat behind you. And if you like, bend the left knee, take a hold of that foot. Definitely an option here. Gaze wherever it feels good. You might want to move your head around. See where it feels good. Release the right foot, the right hand. Let's plant the hands, lift the left knee, and sweep the right foot up and back, downward facing dog, with the right heel high. You can bring the right foot down to the mat or keep it lifted. As you make your way forward to a high plank pose, exhale to lower halfway or all the way down. Tops of the feet come to the mat now. Roll the shoulders back, upward dog. As you exhale, roll over the toes, lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Inhale to lift the left heel. We're we'll working to the other side now. Exhale, bend the knee, open the hip. Stay here for a cycle of breath as you work into that left ankle. Point and flex the toes. Anything that might feel good for you here. Inhale to extend the left heel. As you exhale, bring the left foot forward between the hands. Ground the right heel for warrior one. And inhale to bring the fingertips forward and up. As you exhale, sink into the hips. And you can even bring your hands to your, your hip bone. Draw the right hip forward, pull the left hip back behind you. Turn the tailbone down, roll the shoulders back and down. And then lift the fingertips forward, straight out from the shoulders, straight ahead. Roll the shoulders back so you're brought across the collarbones. Notice the elbows are straight here. Try and maintain that as you sweep the fingertips up towards the ceiling. I notice that a lot of times students, once their arms get out of their peripheral vision, the elbows start to bow out to the sides and they start to make a halo around their head. We really want to keep those sh the fingertips reaching the elbows straight and draw the shoulder blades down. One more big breath here. As we exhale, left hand forward, right hand back. Pivot on your right foot, coming to warrior two. So the right foot is parallel to the short edge of the mat now, sinking deeply into the left knee. Even as we lift the rib cage up and away from the tailbone. Reversing the warrior, we can drop the right hand and lift the left. Follow the left hand with your gaze. Movements up from the navel up so that a lower body stays completely still here. And we are light on the left, on the right fingertips. Inhale to warrior two. Exhale, straighten that left knee, pop the hips back. And as you inhale, reach forward with the looking for length in the spine here. So you're looking for length in the left side as well as the right side. Once you do that, you can spiral your hands, left hand down, right hand up. Roll the left hip underneath you, the right fingertips up. Bring 
your gaze down to your left foot. Make our way back, warrior one. As we exhale, draw your hands down to the inside of the left foot, dropping into the right knee. You can pivot your left toes off the mat. Bring your left hand to the inside of the left thigh. Just roll it open. Begin to turn your chest to the left so you're facing the inside of the left knee. Keep your ankle of the left foot um, stable here. So we don't want that sickling out and straining, over straining that left knee, left ankle. Stay here just like this, getting a twist, to stretch. If you want to add on, bend into the right knee and reach back with your left hand. Open the chest, getting a little bit of a back bend here. You can bring your gaze back to the wall behind you or up at the ceiling, down at your right hand again. Find what feels good here. It's all, we're all gonna look different in this pose. Bringing the right hand, left hand back down to the mat if you have um, had it in the bind. Lifting up the right knee. Let's make our way back now to a three-legged dog with the left leg high. You can touch that left foot down or keep it up as we float forward. Inhaling to high plank. Exhale. Lower, inhale, tops of the feet to the mat. Roll the chest open for cobra or up dog. As you exhale, use the strength of your core, lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Inhale to lift your heels, bend your knees. Exhale, completely empty. Jump to the top of the mat, just for fun. Try halfway lift, gazing straight down. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale to soften the knees and rise to stand. Hands up, look up. As you exhale, hands to heart center, toes together, heels apart. Sink into your hips, coming to a prayer squat, um, to a chair pose. Roll back. Lengthen the spine by turning the tailbone down. Just puff out the low belly, the low back, and feel the belly engage. As you exhale, let's twist to the right. Right elbows high, left elbows hooking around the outside of the left knee. Press into your hands, lift your heart to about the height of your thumbs, and then roll your shoulders back a little bit more. Once again, you can gaze wherever it feels good. Inhale, pointing out left and right. And then as you exhale, let's twist the other way. Right hand, right elbow to the left knee, left elbows high. Lift the heart, extend the spine. We want a nice, strong, flat back from the crown of your head to the tailbone. Inhale, let's come all the way up to stand. Yay! As we exhale, hands through heart center. Let's bring the feet wide and come to a low yogi squat as we come down onto the mat. Four to our seat, but we can pause in our yogi squat. You can be sitting on a block here. You can come all the way down onto your hips. Elbows between the knees, lengthen the spine. And then once you're ready, you can make your way onto your seat. You can reach your hands forward and just sit down, or you can use your, um, your hands to support you. Turn on your mat so you're facing the long edge of your mat and bring your feet wide. Toes are pointing straight up at the ceiling here, and you can even take your hands and open up your thighs a little bit, like bring the inner thighs up towards the ceiling, roll the outer thighs down. Bring your hands next to your hips, lift up and 
and curl your outer hips in a little bit. Lifting up through the crown of the head. You can even bring the fingertips up. And then as we exhale, it's a simple forward fold, bringing the hands down to the mat or the floor and walking them forward, keeping the chest forward. Now I know we could round the spine and come a lot further forward, but we're not gonna do that here. We're keeping the toes pointed up at the ceiling and we're reaching forward with the chest. Let's inhale to come up now. As we exhale, bring the right foot to the inside of the left leg. Left hand can rest on with the palm facing up on the left thigh or on the mat inside the left leg. I like to hook my thumb under my calf. Bring your right fingertips to your right shoulder and roll the right shoulder back. Gaze up at the, bring your chin to the right shoulder, gazing up at the ceiling. And then reach that right hand up and over. Reaching out over the right leg. You can bend the right elbow and just cradle your head so the weight of your head isn't um, bothering your neck. Then roll down. Opening up the right side body. So press the right hip down to the mat. Roll that right elbow up towards the ceiling. Now from here, you can um, take a yogi grip around your left big toe with your left hand if, if you like, and barrel roll your chest down to, so that you're facing out over your left leg. You can hold onto the foot or rest your hands outside your leg, it's up to you. Now we're rounding the spine, allowing the body to Release over the left leg. Inhale to roll back up. As you exhale, you can bring your right leg out. You can give your legs a little bit of a wiggle. And let's do the other side. So the left foot comes to the inside of the right leg. Right arm rests on or inside the right leg. Left hand to the left shoulder, roll it back. So you're opening the chest, the torso to the side, and then reach the left hand up and over. Again, if you like, you can cradle your head. Just keep rolling the left shoulder back. We in no way, at the beginning of this pose, we in no way wanna be folding down. The chin, we don't want the chest facing down. We definitely want facing out to the side. So you're getting that nice stretch, a deep stretch through the left side body. One more full cycle of breath here. And then you can release that right hand from under your calf if you've done that. Take the right toe and then barrel roll your chest down. Face it over the right leg. And then do what you like with your hands. You can reach and take your foot, your ankle, or even just let your hands rest next to the right leg. Roll down. Now we're rounding the spine, so we're not pulling ourselves forward. We're just letting go. Using your hands to support yourself as you come all the way back up to sit. Again, extend your legs, give them a little scoot, and give them a little wiggle. And then let's come um, to face the front of the mat again. Let your big toes, come, your, your, palm, your palms of your feet, your soles of your feet come together. Push your feet away from your body a little bit. So you've got like a diamond shape with your legs. Take your hands and dive them underneath your knees and then curl them around your, um, your shins. So you can place the palms of your hands on the tops of your feet or maybe on the tops of your shins. Tuck your chin and round down. Nice deep stretch in the outer hips. Feeling the shoulders open, the spine lengthen. 
release wherever you can here pay attention to places where you might be holding back sometimes in a pose like this where we're, where we're opening up so much um, our mind begins to like freak out and think we're not safe and asks our body to hold on hold tension hold back from the pose a little bit so look for anywhere where you're holding some tension see if you can just slump into the pose a little bit more maybe there's tension in your face or your shoulders or you're pressing down into your arms Maybe you're holding tension in your back and not really letting yourself turtle down. One more full cycle of breath here. And you can unwind your arms from your legs and use your hands to help yourself back up. Bring the crown of your head up over your shoulders use your outer your hands to help your outer knees back up to center and we'll come down onto our backs now you can use your hands to support yourself or you can use a little core strength just by tucking your chin and reaching your hands forward taking your time about finding your way down onto your back Tuck your shoulder blades in, bring your knees into your chest. Give yourself a hug, a deep hug. Squeeze your knees in tight and wrap your arms around your knees, holding for opposite elbow. Tuck your chin into your throat, your nose into your, towards your knees. Squeeze in as tight as you can. And then let's open out to Savasana. Heels to the far corners of the mat, toes fall open, palms reach up and tuck your shoulder blades in underneath you. Nice pose of Savasana. Taking these last few moments of practice to enjoy the stillness and to once again fully release so once again take a stock see if there's anywhere in your body that's that's working that doesn't need to between your shoulder blades your neck and around your eyes It's in these moments where we find this full, complete relaxation of the body. A full and deliberate relaxation of the body. But we're fully awake and mind is aware. Where we can begin to peel away that outer layer of, of ourselves, the, the outer husk, our body and settle into ourselves. The part of ourself that um, knows what we want can direct our day and our responses to the things happening around us. As always, I'd like to encourage you to stay in Savasana for as long as you have time for. If you are ready to begin moving again, begin with the fingers and toes. 
Make your movement slow and deliberate. Turning into the wrists and the ankles, the head from side to side. Again, finding what feels good for you as you bring movement in towards your body. Turning your head from side to side. Stretching out the full length of your body. And then drawing your knees in once again, gathering energy one final time into the body. Nice gentle hug this time. You can sway from side to side and come to the fetal position. Take a couple of breaths there and then come up to sit. Or you can take the backs of your thighs, tuck your chin, and rock the length of your spine. Do it a couple of times, just because it feels good. Finding eventually a seated position. We can all meet now in a comfortable seat. Lengthen up through the spine. Bring the fingertips up overhead. Join the palms and bring the thumbs to the third eye. Representing the union of the mind, body and the mind. Our true goal of yoga. And finally, let's take one last hinge forward at the hips. Sealing in the benefits of our practice. Thanks for being here today. Namaste. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me today. I love practicing with you in the mornings. If you like this practice, go ahead, hit the like button and leave me a note in the comments. Let me know how you, what you, uh, Thanks so much for joining me today for this practice. I love practicing with you in the morning and I love creating these sequences. If you could leave me a note in the comments, let me know what you like and what you'd like to see more of. I, that would really help me to make more practices for you in the mornings. I hope you have a great day. Namaste. I am so thirsty.